Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, that was... <laughs> wow, I have another raider. Or someone just played Screamo. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I have another raid, though. Um... Andy Attack 2018, thank you for the raid and this and Slayer Music. Thanks for playing Screamo. Um, hey, welcome to uh, Just Calvin slash Global Green Party News Overview. Uh, I start with uh, Green Party UK. Uh, COP26 floundering as UK government distracted by Brexit and sleaze. Greens warn. Uh, Darla Denier, during the months when the climate deal should have been the top priority, the conservative government had was, excuse me, was distracted by Brexit wrangling and more recently they have lost focus due to sleaze within their own party. The Green Party has expressed alarm that the draft agreement shows the climate talks in Glasgow are wildly off track. Carla Dinier, the Green Party co-leader, said its leader is clear from the draft final agreement that, that world leaders are failing to achieve the diplomatic breakthrough we need to prevent catastrophic climate change. In quotes, the draft agreement clearly falls to achieve 1.5 alive. It has the world on track for warming well above two degrees. And instead of making essential commitments now, it proposes kicking the can down the road with more discussions through 2020s. Uh, during the months when the climate deal should have been the top priority, the conservative government was distracted by Brexit's wrangling and more recently they have lost focus due to sleaze within their own party. But as World Wildlife Federation said today, three days in a long time and three days is a long time in climate di diplomacy. The people who share this planet demand that in these last few days, the UK presidency must, um, sorry, um, moves heaven and earth to keep 1.5 alive. The UK uh, government could show leadership on both fossil fuels and climate finance that could help uh, take us towards the stronger agreement the climate needs. We need action now and time to, is short to avoid COP26 turning into a historic failure. This coming from globalgreen.news, Germany's Green Party on track to form a government amid the ongoing energy transition and the fight against global warming. Germans 2021 federal election has ended with the German Green Party securing 14.8% of the national vote and 16 seats in parliament. This is considered a historic win for the German Greens. Now the party led by Annalena Baerbach is entering negotiation talks to form a government. The poll indicates that a three-way coalition government will likely be formed. Official coalition talks from the center-left Social Demo Democrats, or SPD, business-focused Free Democrats, or FDP, and the Greens began on October 21st. The three parties hope to have a coalition agreement by the end of November and to form a government, new government before Christmas 2021. Nevertheless, all three parties still have other options to form a government, and, and they haven't ruled that, that out. As of now, the Traffic Light Coalition, in quotes, kind of, uh, SPD, D, uh, FDP, and Green Party are in favor of becoming the next gener German government. Preliminary talks have marked some agreement on social and environmental issues. With a slight push back on some matters, the Greens' conditions for phasing out coal 
uh, by 2038 and the minimum wage increase to 12 were agreed upon by all parties. However, their demand for a speed limit on the German motorways uh, was not supported. If the coalition negotiates successfully, the Green Party will be in government for the first for the second time in its history. The first time the Green Party was in government was from 98 to 2005, and a coalition led by a uh, government of Gerhard Schroeder or uh, of SPD. The German Green Party originally appeared in, Ger in German politics from the environmental and peace movements of the, of the 1970s. The party played a big role in Germans, uh, Germany's commitment to abandon the use of nuclear power by 2022. In addition, the party also felt le also left its mark with the effort to promote peace by opposing the Iraq War and NATO's bombing campaign on Yugoslavia. By and large, the current Green Party stays true to its founding principles and is very ambitious with its climate policy. Having more electric cars on the road, abandoning coal power, and being able to cut greenhouse gases by 70% by 2030 are some of their goals. Amidst the ongoing energy transition and the fight against global warming, the prospect of the uh, German Greens is and uh, German Greens in government is an optimistic sign. It is likely that an alliance led by SPD will be formed again. It is only a matter of time before all parties reach an agreement, but all indications show that a new German government will be formed before the end of the year. Well, this next um, story about uh, a green is actually about uh, the marijuana green. Uh, this is, comes from HighTimes.com. 24 governors call on Congress to pass cannabis banking bill. Uh, this is from today, from when, I, from when I looked. Governors across U.S. states and territories have penned a letter to congressional leaders urging for cannabis banking access. The governors of 24 states and U.S. territories sent a letter to congressional leaders on Thursday calling on lawmakers to pass legislation that would permit financial institutions to provide banking services to the regulated, to the regulated cannabis industry. The letter from the bipartisan group of two dozen governors seeking a seeks passage of the Secure and Fair Enforcement or SAFE Banking Act, which was approved by the House of Representatives in September as part of a comprehensive defense spending authorization bill. In the letter, which was sent to, minor to uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, and other Democratic and Republican leaders in Congress, the governors of 21 states, Washington, D.C., and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Guam call for a previous sorry, pre um, pre provisions, there we go, of the Safe Banking Act to be included in the first version of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2022, fiscal year. Relief, uh, relief for cash heavy in industry. If pa uh, passed by the Senate and, the, and, a sig and signed into law, Federal banking regulators would be prohibited from penalizing banks that choose to, to serve cannabis firms doing business in accordance with state law. Under current regulations, banks are subjected to penalties under federal money laundering and other laws for servicing such companies, leaving the cannabis industry to operate in a, in a risky environment heavy in cash. Legislation was initially introduced in the House in 2013 by Democrat uh, uh, Rep. Ed Plumuter of Colorado, who has reduced the bill each subsequent Congress cycle, congressional cycle. The letter sent on Thursday, which was led by Democratic Governor uh, Jared Polis of Colorado, notes that 37 states, four U.S. territories, and the District of Columbia have passed recreational or medical cannabis legalization measures. 
but businesses in the regulated cannabis industry are still largely unable to access traditional banking services, including deposits, bank uh, payroll, and checking accounts. Um, med uh, medical and recreational cannabis sales of, in the U.S. were estimated to total to, to total of 17.5 billion last year. But because of uh, antiquated federal banking regulations, almost all cannabis transactions are cash-based. The governors wrote in their letter, not only are cash-only businesses targets for crime, cannabis businesses are further disadvantaged compared to other legal businesses by being unable to open bank accounts or obtain loans of a reasonable rates, at reasonable rates. The Safe Bake Baking Act was passed by the House of Representatives in 2019 and began last year as part of a COVID-19 pandemic relief bill. The House passed the bill again in April as standalone as yeah, as standalone legislation and has included the measure and defense authorization bill currently under consideration, but the bill has so far failed to be passed by both houses of Congress and signed into law by the president. It's time for Congress to allow cannabis related businesses to have better access to the banking system and operate with normal banking accounts, Polis said in a press release on Thursday. Thank you to Congressman Ed Permuda, 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 sorry, uh, Pearl Muter who has continually pushed for legalization to address this important issue after years of cannabis being legal in a multitude of states and is long overdue for cannabis for cannabis businesses to address or to finally excuse me finance financially operate alongside other businesses in the open uh, national banking system the governors also noted in the letter that while cannabis has been legalized in some form by a majority of U.S. states, the continued lack of traditional banking services and large amounts of cash throughout the supply chain leave legal marijuana businesses at an increased risk of robbery and other crime. Additionally, the lack of access to loans inhibits the growth of the booming industry. The safe banking amendment will remedy these uh, harms and help uh, keep communities in our states and territories safe by allowing legitimate and legal cannabis companies to access banking services. Let it continue. Finally, institution, financial institutions will subject the funds and account holders to a rigorous anti-money laundering and know your customer requirements that will further the uh, help states where cannabis has been made legal to keep bad actors out of the system. The Safe Bank Act has more bipartisan support than ever before, and Congress must take steps to ensure that this measure is included in the first in the, in the final version of the NDAA that goes to President Biden's death, the governor concluded. In addition to polls, in addition to polis, excuse me, this letter to Congress was signed by the leaders of Alaska, uh, California, Connecticut, Guam, Illinois, Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, New, uh, New Mexico, New Jersey, New York, North, Carolina, uh, North Dakota, excuse me, uh, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Utah, Virginia, the state of Washington, uh, Washington, D.C., and Wisconsin. In April, a bipartisan group of 21 governors from nearly identical list of states and territories called on Congress to pass the Safe Banking Act after the measure was approved by the House of Representatives. Coming up next, uh, some footage from an event I went to earlier to cover for WGRN and for just Calvin uh, it involves uh, 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 voting and stuff of that nature. Um, stay tuned for that. Uh, and let's see. Uh, uh, Sandy Balzinia spoke at this, uh, and unfortunately, the as per usual, the the device I bring with me to film it. Uh, for some reason, I 
that you messed up as far as the uh, the uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, the storage. Uh, I had to go back to Facebook Live. So uh, go to Jakarta Bagata on Facebook, and you'll be able to see the other half of. I believe it's an hour-long uh, speech-a-thon, pretty much. Uh, four people, I think, uh, spoke. Uh, two um, men of the cloth and uh, I think an organizer and someone else. I forget who, but anyway. And also, at the same time, uh, on Facebook Live, you'll see that at the end of the whole thing, we did take the letter that was from, I don't know how many people, uh, about... Uh, who is it? Uh, Rob Portman, actually, the uh, the senator here, I believe, uh, to uh, uh, to vote yes on a uh, on a voters bill that's coming up. Uh, we took took it in there, and again, you can see this on. Just go to J uh, Jakarta Bagata on, um, on Facebook. Also, you can go to or just stay stay with me a little bit, and you'll be able to see the beginning footage of it. So I think it's uh, roughly. But 25 or so minutes of uh, speeches and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, leave your comments. Uh, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like. Thumbs down if you don't like. Um, subscribe and share. Thank you and peace out for now. Um, stay tuned. I almost forgot. I need to remind you. Uh, I have Bart Everson, who is running for North... Uh, New Orleans City at large um, this Friday. And I also have uh, Williams Pounds of Arizona Green Party running for governor on Monday the 15th. So stay tuned for that as well.
Dateline, November 10th, 2021. Calvin attends a press event put together by Common Cause to push for the final passage of the Freedom to Vote Act. First we hear from Catherine Tersher, the Executive Director for Common Cause Ohio. Then we hear from Jack Sullivan, the Federal Director of the National Council of Churches. the country and then we'll also have some folks talking about dark money money in politics the need to actually address the undue influence of money in our elections and at the end of the day in policy making so with that i'm going to hand this over to um my new friend reverend dr jack sullivan who's with the ohio council of churches and here he comes Loving the technology. Good morning. I'm Reverend Jack Sullivan Jr., the Executive Director of the Ohio Council of Churches. As a native Clevelander, I have lived in eight states and the District of Columbia. Inside every community that I called home, I was surrounded by untold numbers of hardworking, socially responsible people. In visible and sometimes not so obvious ways, these diverse women, men, and children took pride in who they were while honoring their neighbors and doing their best to contribute to the common good. They did not always agree on the important issues of life, but they found a way to live fairly and peacefully with each other. This is not just my story. It is one of scores of people across this nation. There are people who understand that life is full of ups and downs, and at times we win, but other times, no matter how we're prepared, we work, we lose. Yet there was an ethic at work in so many of our families and neighborhoods, a standard that led us to be gracious when we won and to commit to working harder, longer, smarter, and more creatively when we lost. 
women did not authorize successful people to silence or mute opposing views, and losing did not justify less successful people to ask that the rules of competition be changed to thus disable their opponents. Now, I know the picture I just painted did not apply to every context or situation. Even so, fair-minded Americans understand that these principles form the moral infrastructure on which we can build and maintain fair, balanced, and morally just ways of life. As fair-minded citizens contemplate measures that are in the docket of state and national lawmakers, bills designed to silence and render unlawful the public witness of dissenting voices, and bills designed to discourage me hard-looking Americans from taking part in the elections by making it harder and more challenging for them to cast a vote, it becomes evident that fairness is not a feature of the sponsor of these bills. Right. And morality is not a motivation for the supporters of these bills. Rather than considering the voices of the sin, framers of these bills seek to crush them. Rather than working harder and more creatively to win election, the authors of these bills seek to wield their legislative power in ways that mute the voices, the voices and votes of people who are not in their faces and thus tilt the proverbial election seesaw in their favor. That's not right. These bills, which are part of the not so hidden national political playbook, drip of the social toxins of interposition and nullification. And they asked level-headed patriotic Americans to reject codes of fairness and morality and have served as the backbone of moved across our nation for generations. As a Christian, I have two questions for lawmakers who also identify as followers of Jesus. Who would Jesus silence? No one. Who would Jesus discourage? No one. Neither should you. In the name of fairness, in the name of fairness, I say it is time for us to speak from our conscience and the depth of our faith and say it's time to not restrict voting, but enable voting. I'm asking today, we're asking today, that our lawmakers commit themselves to endorsing measures that reflect moral character, affirm human dignity, and embrace principles of justice and fairness and inclusivity. I recommend to them all, we recommend to them all, that they vote for the Freedom to Vote Act. The Freedom to Vote Act would halt gerrymandered partisan voting maps that resemble something like a Frankenstein movie that distort, crack, and pack people of color communities and unjustly ensure one party's victory over another. Rather than curtailing our sacred right to vote, this act would expand it by offering same day, even automatic voter registration Share communities from improper purging of voter rolls. Restore voting rights to our sisters and our brothers with past criminal convictions. Yes. By yes. providing adequate early voting avenues and upgrading access to voting for people with disabilities. Yes. This is what democracy looks like. Yes. So in conclusion, to an appointment, we need you to go way down to Washington land. Tell your colleagues to let God's people vote. Yeah. Pass the Freedom to Vote Act. Use your power to ensure that everybody is included and represented in our democracy and has unimpeded opportunities to participate within it. Let God's people vote. Let God's people vote. Let God's people vote. Amen. Let God's people vote.
Amen. Amen.
that are already heavily underrepresented. All attempts to build barriers to the ballot box must be removed. The Freedom to Vote Act helps remove these limitations. It ensures that the bedrock of our democracy, our right to vote, our voice is protected. And in our safeguarding the voting rights of especially the marginalized, we defend the right of every voter in this nation. Every citizen should have fair and equal access to the ballot box. Every vote should count the same as the next. Today, we're calling on Senator Portman to protect our most fundamental right in our United States of America, and that's our right to vote. Yeah. Senator right. Portman, we urge you to support the Freedom to Vote Act. Thank you. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce Crystal Lett, who's with Red, Wine, and Blue. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me today. It is so freaking good to be out and about with you guys in person. It's an amazing feeling. Again, again I'm Crystal Lett, the Ohio Program Director at Red, Wine, and Blue, a group of thousands of suburban women. At Red, Wine, and Blue, we seek to bring new people, specifically suburban women, into the political space. As a suburban mom myself with three young children, I can often be seen attending a Little League game. While watching these games, we the parents bear witness as our kids learn how to play on a team, to work together, agree to disagree, face an opponent, and play by the rules of the game with sportsmanlike conduct. Sometimes I'm still freaking astounded by how much better our society would be if we followed the simple lessons we all learned as children in Little League. Yep. I believe politics is a team sport. One of our primary goals at Red, Wine & Blue is to build the team, to encourage women from Ohio and all over the nation to engage on political issues, to volunteer, to support, and even to run for office themselves. But how in the world do we bring people into this space and keep them engaged if they know from day one that this game is rigged? That's right. That the rules and regulations of the game were set up to guarantee their team's loss before the game has even begun. That's right. Good politics depends on teams playing at times against each other, but with profound respect for the rules and regulations that are what make the game worth playing. That's right. Our current maps and our attitudes of our politicians run completely contrary to what the Founding Fathers intended. Not only is that a direct insult to the founders of our great nation, our leaders in this state now blatantly are disregarding the Constitution, the very Constitution that they swore to uphold and protect when they took their oath of office. One way we can level this playing field is by ensuring access to voting. We must do better to restore people's faith in democracy by guaranteeing that the system works for all of us. We must ensure that voting is accessible, fair, and inclusive. The Freedom to Vote Act ensures that everyone is included and represented in our democracy and has unimpeded opportunities to participate, and I call on Senator Rob Portman to support this legislation. When Americans are able to vote, and we can ensure fair districts. We create the opportunity for more people to engage in the democratic process. Uh -huh. Not only that, but we ensure that those that are ultimately chosen to do the job are beholden to the people that put them there. That is what makes America great, and that is the team worth playing for. Thank you so much. She, her. I am the Policy and Advocacy Director for the Ohio Organizing Collaborative. I'm a health scientist and I also serve as the Vice Chair of the Ohio Citizens Redistricting Commission. We are here today demanding that the United States Senate pass the Freedom to Vote Act. Here in America, we value our freedom, no matter what color we are, our background, or our zip code. The freedom to have, to, uh, to have a say in the decisions that impact our lives 
from curbing the pandemic, creating new jobs, to making health care affordable and accessible. But today, the same faction that spread lies about COVID, about the election, that fueled the deadly attack on our capital, is trying to block the Freedom to Vote Act, which Americans across race, place, and political ideology support by huge margins. We've seen a coordinated attack, and you heard my colleague here talk about that, all around our country. They've attacked our health care. They've attacked our voting rights. They've attacked our re the redistricting process, where we can ensure that voters are able to choose their leaders that will fight for us in the State House and that will fight for us in Congress and in Senate and not the other way around. Just as we rose up to vote in record numbers last year, we will rise up again to demand our leaders exercise their majority and pass the Freedom to Vote Act to set the national standards for us to safely, freely cast our vote and to ensure that our trusted local election officials count every vote and prevent our state state lawmakers from sabotaging our elections in order to take and hold on to power. Yeah. Yeah. Passing the Freedom to Vote Act is critical to preserving our democracy. Passing the Freedom to Vote Act will ensure that our vote is not diluted. All right. I believe it is the power of the people, the power in our voice, to influence the passage of this voter Freedom to Vote Act and we can ensure that the children, the generations that come after us, have a voice. They have a voice, vote, and it matters. Thank you. Have a good day. The next batter up is Sandy Bolzonius, who is with Move to Amend. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. On this fine November 10 day, I am proud to represent Move to Men, the only national grassroots people's movement that is dedicated to a constitutional amendment that will declare that corporations are not people and money is not Oh, so a few of us, few of you have heard about us. Oh, okay. That's good, because it is a national movement. <laughs> So Move to Men stands with Ohioans who are dedicated to democracy, and I think a few of them are right here today. My name is Sandy Bolsingas, and I am with the Central Ohio affiliate of Move to Men to urge Senator Portman to, dare to exercise his freedom to vote to ensure his constituents' freedom to vote. Fair is fair, right? Our senators get to vote in Congress and have it count. Yep. No one questions that. Yep. Why shouldn't Ohioans have the same guarantee? Right. This is a burning question for me, and I wonder if it is not for you as well. While our speakers are expertly articulating the oh-so-obvious reason why a democracy requires citizens, freedoms to vote, yep. I keep thinking, well, of course, fair and free elections are the cornerstone of democracy. That's right. How can you have democracy without that? Without it, say goodbye to this form of government. Yeah. Without it, say goodbye to this form of government. That's right. Surely, Senator Portman knows this. So why are we having to rally him to do the right thing? Ought he not already be on board? Seriously, what about fair and voting, fair voting in elections does Senator Portman not take issue with? Does he really want to restrict and even worse block people from voting? Yeah, I'm hoping not. Is he fine with the dark money flowing into campaigns? Is he opposed to fair district maps? Yeah. Is he okay with bad faith factors overriding the vote of the people? Yeah. I'm hoping not. I mean, he is a representative 
in, of this in our in our nation's highest body, legislative body. As a rep 